Brian Mudd, this is the video cheat sheet for Tuesday, August the 16th. Have some decent news in today's cheat sheet, so hang in there for it. All right, so 34% of everyone refinancing right now is going to a shorter duration mortgage. That's an all-time record for the number switching to a shorter duration mortgage. The most common of 15, but a lot of people even going to an eight year. And some of this can make a lot of sense on the surface. And if you don't have any financial worries, it can also make sense to be doing a period. But I do have some concerns here. Generally speaking, uh, you know, you can take a 30-year fix at 6% right now, go to a 15-year at 3.5% and have nearly the same mortgage payment. So a lot of people are seeing that and going, you know what, let's just go ahead and, and do that and we get the house paid off in 15 years. My one concern here is how many times in today's economy do we see someone lose their job and then lose their house because of the job? I don't have to tell you that it doesn't matter how good the interest rate is, if you can't pay the mortgage, you're going to lose your house. And how unfortunate is that? What I would rather see, because it does take so long to obtain new employment if you do lose a job, is that you stay with the 30-year fix, which you can get at about 4.2%. So it sounds like you're paying a huge uh, amount more in interest to be able to get the longer duration mortgage. And then when economic times are good for you, you pay the extra that you would have anyway to that, uh, to that 15 year and you can still get it paid off in 15 year, years or less. And that way you have more financial flexibility so that if, unfor if an unfortunate life event such as one of you losing a job occurs, you have a much better chance of being able to hang on to your home. So please consider that. I think this is a huge financial mistake that a lot of people end up making because we all know that over the course of 15 years, there's a pretty good chance some negative financial event is going to happen in our lives. We just don't always think that way. Stocks. S&P downgrade? What downgrade? If you were asleep for the last week, guess what? We're right back where we were before the S&P downgrade. As much as that hurt by the end of the day, Wednesday last week, and as emotional as people were, yesterday we told you that $14 billion was yanked out of stock funds because people just couldn't take it anymore by the end of the day last Wednesday. Well, that's all been erased in the last three trading days. A strong day last Thursday, followed by a good day on Friday and another up day yesterday. All forgiven. Now, we aren't anywhere near the highs yet. We had been down for about two weeks prior to the wild ride last week, but we are well off of the lows. And what this gets back to is everything I've been talking about, which is if you need money short term, you shouldn't be in the market. You should be on the sidelines uh, so you have that money for a car, a down payment on a home, whatever it is that you need the money for. But otherwise, if you're in the right companies, you know those companies are growing, are cash rich, more than debt, and uh, pay a good yield, you're likely to be just fine. And you won't get sh so shaken up by the ups and downs in the market either. Technology and your auto uh, dealer. How many times have you been looking for a new car, you ask a question, and you get that blank stare back from the salesman? Or you can tell that... He realizes that he has to say something, so you can tell he just starts making it up. No more for any Mazda dealers. Mazda is uh, the first auto company to implement iPads in the sales room. That's right. All Mazda dealers are going to be incorporated in iPads with their salespeople so that on the fly, if you ask a question about a new car and they don't have the answer right there, boom, they can pull it up on the iPad and look it up for you. I think it's kind of cool, and I think it's something you'll probably end up seeing a lot of other companies do, whether it's an iPad or another tablet-like product. Speaking of Apple-related products, iPhone orders are up another 12%. Apple is ordering more phones, uh, 56 million more for the rest of the year, and half of those are iPhone 5s. So that gives you an idea that they're looking to sell more than 25 million iPhones between the time that they're going to be released, which I believe is uh, going to be around the first week of October or so, and the rest of the year. Merry Christmas to Apple, I think is the story there. Credit card delinquencies, meanwhile, there's good news here. You know, we've taken the, the word about all of the debt problems in the country, and with us, we are now seeing 17-month lows again on credit card de uh, delinquencies, so we continue to make progress. And last but not least, Verizon. If you're not in the smartphone game already, they want you there. In fact, if you're a traditional Verizon customer and you upgrade from a regular cell phone to a smartphone, they'll give you a $100 credit. Not so bad if you're going to make the move anyway. That's the cheat sheet for today. Uh, going on vacation. I'll keep uh, some information posted right here on the cheat sheet while I'm gone, and we'll see you next week.